I'm back from this special spot in the Caribbean, so in this video I'm not just going to explain why I think this is one of the best islands in the world, but I'm also going to share three lessons I learned from this stunning place. Welcome to St. Thomas. So this was just an express trip to St. Thomas just before the pandemic and there's some things I want to share with you today that go beyond the usual top things to do. These are really reflections about the place as I always prefer to share an alternative perspective when we travel. But before starting let me just put some context. St. Thomas is part of the US Virgin Islands in the Caribbean and what's really interesting is that this island is the perfect example of a financial transaction because St. Thomas was sold to the US by Denmark for 25 million dollars in gold coin in 1917 just because the colony had been running at a loss. All right, let's go straight to the point and as always, I'll share my experience in three parts. Megan's Bay is arguably the most famous beach on St. Thomas and according to the National Geographic, one of the best in the world. It has soft white sand, beautiful palm trees and calm blue waters just because it's protected by hills. Personally, this is one of the best places I ever seen. That being said, it can get really busy, especially if there are multiple cruise ships in port. The best time to go there in the morning and during the late afternoon or early evening hours. But obviously, if we just do a day trip, this doesn't really matter. If we want to avoid a large number of people, we can walk down to either end of beach, as most visitors congregate in the area around the restaurant. So typically, if we walk down a few meters away, we will be fine, there will be much less people. We spent over three hours enjoying the sun swimming in the ocean and watching the pelicans dive bombing. Worth mentioning that the admission is around five dollars for non-residents and if we drive an extra two dollars at the time we speak. The money is reinvested as this place looks very clean and pristine. So even though this is one of the nicest places in the world, we might also want to pay attention to the extras. There's decent snorkeling along the rocky parts of the bay, but Megan's Bay is not really known for good snorkeling. On the other hand, there's a lot of water sport options or activities such as uh, paddle boats, kayaks and small sandfish sailboats. Even if we don't want to do any water activity, that's fine. There's a beautiful trail that goes through tropical forests, mangroves and the beach itself. There's something about St. Thomas and coffee. There's sensational coffee shops in this island. You know when you feel happy, comfortable, excited about something? Right, this was my feeling when having coffee in the island. And there's one coffee shop that I really enjoyed, this is not sponsored by the way, called Virgin Island Coffee Roastery. They say that the secret for such a good coffee lies in the method of artisanal small batch roasting, because roasting the beans in smaller quantities leads to better quality control and let them capture flavors and aromas really found in mass-produced coffees. Overall, I felt like the coffee experience in St. Thomas was just so real. Like, when I think about coffee, for me, there are two factors. A, technical. This is about having a good balance of acidity, sweetness, and bitterness in one sip, with a smooth flavor and no off notes. I don't like it burnt or raw. By no means I'm an expert, right? But that's how I like it. And B, how does this place make me feel? And this is even more important than the technical side. For me, having coffee is not just to drink something hot, but it's taking a break from the reality. It's like an open eyes meditation where I pay more attention to what's around me. So it's important the context and the place I'll be buying coffee from. In St. Thomas, I found myself in the right atmosphere to enjoy coffee, which ultimately improved my state of mind. So 
So before we mentioned how this island is a coffee paradise, on that note, there was one bar by the beach that had no Wi-Fi, and they put a big sign and pretend it's 1995. That blew my mind. If we think about it, how technology changed the way of communication between us. In the 17th century, a cafe was a traditional type of coffee house and it played a very important role in, in social interaction. The coffee houses became a popular place which allowed people to congregate, talk, write, read and entertain one another. In the coffee house back in the days, people used to gather together to discuss political issues and debates. But things have changed in the 21st century. When we go to a coffee shop these days, what's our most frequent question? Let's be honest, what's the Wi-Fi password, right? And probably we get nervous if we don't get it. We don't even ask anymore if the place actually has Wi-Fi. We just assume it and then we go for the password. And that's insane. And I blame myself as well because I'm one of those guys and this is one of my frustrations. In St. Thomas, I was thinking, how much time do we spend talking to our families and friends? How much social media is controlling us? When Wi-Fi came to our lives, then these coffee shops became a new form of a computer room. So nowadays we barely talk to each other. This is my open question. How do we feel when there's no Wi-Fi in a coffee shop? Or in other words, what if we don't have our phone in the coffee shop at all? When was the last time we talked to somebody for more than five minutes without checking our phones? At least for today, I'll enjoy my cup of coffee without Wi-Fi and talking face to face. If you like this video, you might also want to check some other videos I have in the Caribbean islands. And if you're really enjoying my content, my vibe and what you see, please consider subscribing to the channel so I can keep making these videos every week. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Did I talk too much about coffee? I don't think so. All right, guys, for the Caribbean, there's a couple of more videos coming. And then after that, starting in June, we're going to make some vlogs. I got feedback from you, so we're going to start doing some vlogs in London. So hopefully you will like them. Stay tuned, subscribe, and let's be in touch.